hello and welcome back to this channel once again in today's video we are going to look at the introduction to complex numbers now given the quadratic equation say 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 equals 0 how do we solve this equation to determine the values of x now we can do that using the quadratic formula which is given by x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b square minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now the general form of any quadratic equation is given as ax square plus bx plus c equals 0. So by comparing the two equations, we can say that a is equal to 2, b is equal to 3, and then c is equal to 5. Now let's substitute the values of a, b, and c in here. So this becomes x equals negative b, we have b to be 3, plus or minus the square root of b square, we have b to be 3, so 3 square minus 4 times a which is 2 and then times 3 which is 5 all divided by 2a so 2 times 2 now let's simplify so this becomes negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 square is 9 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40 so we have 9 minus 40. Now 9 minus 40 is negative 31. So we have negative 31. That is the square root of negative 31 all divided by 4. So this is the point where we introduce the concept of complex numbers. Now a complex number is a number that is written in the form a plus jb so we have a to be the real part and then we have jb to be the imaginary part now in other textbooks a complex number can be written in the form a plus ib however in engineering mostly we denote current with i therefore instead of writing a plus ib we choose to write a plus jb and this is called the cartesian complex number and the imaginary value j is equal to the square root of negative one now also from the properties of sets we know that the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b so we are going to apply this property here therefore we say that x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus this time we are going to have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 31. Now because 31 is a prime number, we cannot further simplify this set. So we have this all over 4. Now since j is equal to the square root of negative 1, we substitute that in here and then we have negative 3 plus or minus j times the square root of 31 all divided by 4. Now since we need to get two values of x, we have x equals negative 3 plus j times the square root of 31 all divided by 4 or x equals negative 3 minus j times the square root of 31 all divided by 4. Now let's take another example. So given the quadratic equation, 5x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. 
let's solve this to determine the values of x so we have x to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b square minus 4ac or divided by 2a so from this quadratic equation we have a to be 5 we have b to be negative 6 and then we have c to be 5 so substituting these values into the quadratic formula we have negative into bracket negative 6 plus or minus the square root of we have b to be negative 6 so negative 6 square minus 4 times a which is 5 times c which is also 5 so we have this all divided by 2 times a so 2 times 5 so this becomes negative 1 times negative 6 becomes 6 plus or minus we have the square root of negative 6 square is 36 minus 5 times 5 is 25 times 4 is 100 so 36 minus 100 is negative 64 so we have the square root of negative 64 all divided by 10 let's further simplify so this becomes 6 plus or minus we have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 64 all divided by 10 now since the square root of negative 1 is equal to j we say that x is equal to 6 plus or minus j and then square root of 64 is equal to 8 so that becomes j8 all divided by 10 at this point we can factor out 2 and cancel out so we have x equals 6 divided by 2 we have 3 plus or minus j 8 divided by 2 is 4 10 divided by 2 is 5 therefore we say that x is equal to 3 plus j4 all over 5 or x is equal to 3 minus j4 divided by 5 now 2j is the same as j2 normally because we are used to writing numbers before letters we usually write 2j instead of j2 however any of them is correct now let's move ahead as we perform some calculations on the powers of j so in the previous section we established the fact that the square root of negative 1 is equal to j so if j is equal to the square root of negative 1 then j square is equal to the square root of negative 1 all square at this point the square cancels the square root and we have j square equals negative 1 what do you think will be the value of j cube so j cube is equal to j square times j and that is equal to the square root of negative 1 square times j the square cancels the square roots we are left with negative 1 times j and that is equal to negative j therefore j cube is equal to negative j j exponent 4 can be expressed as j square times j square j square is equal to negative 1 so we have negative 1 times negative 1 and that is equal to 1 so j exponent 4 is equal to 1 notice that j exponent any number which is a multiple of 4 is equal to 1 so for example j exponent 4 is equal to 1 j exponent 8 is also equal to 1 j exponent 16 is equal to 1 j exponent 32 is equal to 1 so long as the exponent is a multiple of 4 
then we have the final answer to be equal to 1. So at this point, let's try some examples. So we are going to evaluate a j exponent 8 divided by 2 b negative 2 over j exponent 7 and then c 4 over j exponent 13. Now let's solve these questions or these examples together. So A, we have J exponent 8 divided by 2. So J exponent 8 can be expressed as J exponent 4 times J exponent 4. And we know that J exponent 4 is equal to 1. Therefore, we have 1 times 1 divided by 2. And that is equal to 1 over 2. Now let's move on to B. That is negative 2 divided by j exponent 7. We can as well express this as negative 2 divided by j exponent 4 times j exponent 3. Now j exponent 4 is 1 times j exponent 3 is negative j. So we have 1 times negative j. So this becomes negative 2 over negative j. We cancel out the negatives. We are left with 2 over j. Now j is an imaginary value. So we can leave that at the denominator. So the best thing to do is to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by j. So we multiply the numerator and the denominator by j. So that this becomes 2 times j, we have 2j, divided by j times j is j square, which is equal to negative 1. So finally, we have our answer to be negative 2j. Now let's take the last one. That is 4 divided by j exponent 13. So this is also equal to 4 divided by j exponent 12 times j because 12 is a multiple of 4 we can say that j exponent 12 is equal to 1 so this becomes 1 times j which is the same as j so we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by j so that we have 4j divided by j square which is equal to negative 1 so finally we have negative 4j. Now let's move on to addition and subtraction of complex numbers. So given two complex numbers, say z1 and z2, assuming that we have z1 to be x1 plus jy1 and z2 to be x2 plus j y2 then we can add or subtract these two complex numbers by adding or subtracting separately the two real parts and the two imaginary parts therefore we have z1 plus z2 to be equal to x1 plus j y1 plus x2 plus j y2 so we are going to first of all add up the two real parts so we have x1 plus x2 plus j times the imaginary parts that is y1 plus y2 so basically this is how to add two complex numbers Therefore, if you want to subtract z2 from z1, then this becomes x1 minus x2 plus j times y1 minus y2. So basically, if you want to add or subtract two complex numbers, then you are going to add or subtract separately the two real parts 
and the two imaginary parts. Now let's take an example. Given that z1 is equal to 2 plus 4j and then z2 is equal to 3 minus j. Then we are going to find z1 plus z2 and then z1 minus z2. So let's solve this together. So for i, we have z1 plus z2. z1 is equal to 2 plus 4j plus z2 we have 3 minus j. So this becomes we have 2 plus 3 and then we have plus 4j minus j. So finally we have our answer to be 2 plus 3 is 5, 4j minus j is 3j, so we have 5 plus 3j, so that is z1 plus z2. Now let's solve for z1 minus z2, so we have 2 plus 4j minus 3 minus j, we have 2 minus 3 and then 4j minus negative j. So this becomes 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 4j minus negative j becomes 4j plus j, which is 5j. So we have negative 1 plus 5j. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. In the next video, we are going to focus on how to multiply and divide complex numbers.